manual, automatic, CVT, or semi-automatic transmissions. Have you considered these when looking for a car? How do all these transmissions differ? Which is the most popular and which is the most reliable? Let's dive right in. First, let's find out the purpose of the transmission or gearbox in your car. If you look at a car, it makes sense that the more the throttle valve is open, the engine can reach a higher speed. Pressing the gas pedal all the way down brings you up to the maximum speed. If you release that gas pedal lightly, the speed decreases. Maybe you think, why not connect the motor directly to the wheels? But engines run between 800 and 8,000 RPM. While the car wheels usually do about 1,800 RPM at an average speed of 60 miles an hour. That's a really big difference in rotational speed range. What would happen if you were to remove the transmission? Hypothetically, the engine would need only 1800 RPM to reach 60 miles an hour. But this is a fairly low engine speed. And if you run too long at such low speeds, the engine will quickly lose performance since the oil pressure will be insufficient for lubrication. Neither the engine itself, nor the wheels, nor the other components of the car would be able to handle running at such low revolutions. Another thing to remember is that the higher car speed doesn't equate to more engine power. Same thing with torque. More torque doesn't equal more speed. For example, if you're starting to drive uphill, you would need more torque and power, not speed. If you try driving your car uphill and try to maintain the same speed, you'll have to press the gas pedal harder. It might seem that the power remains the same since the speed doesn't change, but that's not the case. When driving uphill, the engine delivers more power at the same RPM in the same gear. And you can tell that by looking at the current fuel consumption. To effectively accelerate and overcome inclines, you need to maintain the RPM in the maximum engine power range. That's why the engine needs a gearbox. By reducing the speed with the gearbox, we can increase the torque while keeping the engine power constant. Also, there is no need for more torque. You can increase the transmission speed. So, the main function of the transmission is to control the speed and torque of the drive wheels. The transmission allows for optimal traction and vehicle speed, as well as reversing. Even more, the gearbox helps to decouple the engine crankshaft from the drive wheels, which allows the vehicle to idle or come to a complete stop without shutting down the engine. Let's look at the manual transmission. How does it work? It's based on a simple gear ratio principle. The input shaft contains gears that have a synchronizer and a locking ring. These gears are free to rotate as they aren't rigidly attached to the input shaft. On the same shaft, there are gears which rotate along with the shaft. A clutch is used to connect to the gears. When a clutch, which is moved using the gear level, is connected at one end with the synchronizer teeth of the desired gear and the other with the gear that sits rigidly on the rotating shaft, both the desired gear and the input shaft will rotate synchronously. But this isn't easy to do as the selected gear is not attached to the motor shaft and the gear on which the clutch is located has the rotational speed of the motor shaft. Therefore, these two gears have different rotational speeds and need to match the same speed to lock together. This is where the locking ring comes into play because it can move along the axes. The clutch pedal is pressed, the shaft is disconnected from the motor. Then, when we move the clutch, it presses the locking ring against the cone of the gear synchronizer. Due to the high frictional force between the locking ring and the synchronizer cone, the speed of the gear matches the shaft speed so the clutch can now move further to engage with the gear without any problem. Manual transmissions are relatively simple and reliable in design and inexpensive to maintain and fuel efficient. For example, the Peugeot 208 Active with a 1.6 liter petrol engine and 115 horsepower can travel 45.2 miles per gallon in urban conditions. Also, cars with manual transmissions have easier control in off-road conditions. The plus is that you're in control of the driving process however it suits you. One downside is that it can be inconvenient when you're driving in the city that you need to constantly change gears during traffic. That's why the automatic transmission was invented. And taxi drivers in New York City loved it. It eliminates the inconvenience because in essence it does the thinking and action for you. The technical word for it is hydromechanical transmission. The name sums out how it works. The transmission automatically shifts gears by using fluid. The automatic transmission fluid or ATF creates pressure in the system removes heat, lubricates the moving parts, and cleans the inside to prevent contamination. The automatic transmission fluid is contained in a fully sealed torque converter. 
The torque converter transmits torque to the primary gear assembly or gear grouping and acts as a clutch and fluid coupling. This part of the engine has two multi-vane impellers. Now after you start the motor, the flywheel begins rotating and activates the pump impeller. The impeller blades pick up automatic transmission fluid and direct it to the turbine impeller blades and forces it to rotate and transmit torque from the engine. Gear shifting is done by the electronic control unit, which ensures the gears change smoothly without the use of a clutch. The system was invented a long time ago, back in 1928. At the time, the automatic transmission was installed in the city buses of Sweden. And the torque converter we talked about was invented even earlier than the automatic transmission, at the beginning of the 20th century in fact. Now as you know, an automatic car has just two pedals, the gas and the brakes. The typical gear options you have are for park, drive, and reverse. That's pretty much all you control. Having a simple gearbox like that can last a long time, about 250,000 miles, unless you forget to regularly change the oil, usually after 40,000 miles. And if you don't change the oil regularly, then the valve body and filters will clog up. Then the oil pump won't supply the pressure needed to properly turn the gears. The disadvantage of the automatic transmission is that it doesn't have the same dynamics compared to manual transmission cars. Also, it has a higher fuel consumption and less fuel efficiency except for the very modern ones. Now, if you want a car with smooth driving, good acceleration dynamics, and more economical fuel consumption, then we should talk about a car with a CVT, or Continuously Variable Transmission. CVT is an automatic transmission that can change seamlessly through a continuous range of gear ratios. How does a CVT work? Think of a sports bicycle with six gears in the back and three in the front, and they're connected by a chain. When you put the chain on the large chain ring at the front and the smallest cog in the back, then it becomes harder to pedal. But you cover more distance because you get more speed. But if the chain is on the small ring at the front, the largest cog in the back, then you can pedal more smoothly and more often, but you cover less distance and bike speed is also lower. But this latter setup gives you more torque, so it makes it easier for you to climb up hills. Another option is if the chain is in the middle chain ring or both the front and back, both gears having the same number of teeth, this is the optimal gear for torque and speed. And this example is similar to how a CVT works. Did you know that the first CVT was conceived by Leonardo da Vinci in 1490? In one of his schematic drawings is a diagram of parallel cones and a belt thrown between them, moving across an axis of rotation of the cones. This made it possible to change the gear ratio of the pair. The CVT system is based on a belt drive consisting of two sliding cone-shaped pulleys and a V-belt stretched between them. Torque transfers from the drive pulley to the driven pulley due to friction between the belt and the pulleys. One part of the driving and driven pulley is fixed motionless, and the second can move its axes to the left or right. When the drive pulley halves, moving towards each other, each push the belt outward, this leads to an increase in the radius of the pulley along which the belt rotates. As a result, the gear ratio increases. When a reduction in gear ratio is required, the driven pulley expands and the belt moves to a smaller radius. The movement of the pulleys is controlled by electronics. The torque converter is only needed to make sure the car moves from a standstill. After a start, it gets blocked. So, passengers in cars with CVT don't feel the gear shifting at all, and you get a smoother ride without jerking. CVT cars have better dynamic acceleration than an automatic transmission. Also, fuel consumption in CVT cars in comparison with automatic transmissions is way less. The CVT is very comfortable, but it has its drawbacks, too. CVTs are by no means cheap and it can really cost if you damage them. Mechanical friction occurs in the CVT, so the amount of energy lost is very high. CVTs are difficult to repair. Approximately 50% of the CVT system is controlled by electronics, so not all car shops can repair it as fully as they would a manual or automatic transmission. The CVT can also be more problematic because it needs to be carefully maintained. You need to change the oil every 30 to 35,000 miles. Otherwise, the valve bodies become clogged and the oil pump cannot build up normal pressure, and so the pulleys cannot converge and diverge normally to clamp and unclench the belt. As a result, it slips and wears out a lot and can break. The belt itself consists of metal parts, and when it breaks, they scatter throughout the box, destroying everything around it. So you should change the belt around every 60 to 65,000 miles. Otherwise, if you don't change the belt and oil during the recommended period, the CVT won't last beyond 190 to 200,000 miles.
Now let's look at the semi-automatic transmission, which is similar to a manual transmission, but you don't have a clutch pedal. Instead, when you shift the gear stick, the internal sensors automatically depress the automated clutch for you. You can think of it as a hybrid between a fully automatic and manual transmission. Semi-automatic transmissions are more complex than manual or automatic transmissions. They're also prone to failures and malfunctions, and repairs are very expensive. And at the end of the day, in terms of reliability, the manual transmission remains more reliable than the semi-automatic. Have you ever tried renting a car in Europe? If so, you have a higher chance of getting a manual transmission car than an automatic. But it's the opposite in America. Manuals are less popular here. In fact, knowing how to drive a stick shift is becoming a lost art in the American car world. Today, some 97% of new combustion engine cars sold in the U.S. are equipped with an automatic transmission. That's because America Americans love ease and convenience, and automatics in general have come a long way since their beginning. Plus, gas prices are relatively cheaper in the U.S. and other countries, so you can see why America loves the automatic. But it wasn't always that way. Did you know that decades ago, they used whale oil as automatic transmission oil? I'm not making this up. It was a good option because evidently it prevented rust. But the industry stopped using whale oil around the 1960s. By that time, three-speed units with torque converters had gained popularity. By the 1980s, automatic transmissions with four gear ratios became more popular. Many were equipped with lock-up torque converters to improve fuel economy. It was around that time that automatic started to become ever more popular and eventually started outselling manuals in the U.S. By 2007, automatics outsold manuals for the first time worldwide. So, what are the pros and cons of the automatic transmission? The main thing is, they're easy and convenient. It's much easier to drive, especially in heavy traffic. You just press the pedal and go. It's a no-brainer, whereas manual cars require more effort to start, stop, and accelerate, especially in heavy traffic. With an automatic car, you usually don't have to worry about stalling, whereas manuals can stall accidentally at a stoplight. Automatic transmissions are especially appreciated if you live in a hilly area. If you're not a skilled driver, it's easier to conquer hills in San Francisco with an automatic transmission car, rather than stalling or rolling back in a manual. Modern automatic transmissions shift quicker and smoother, so you and your passengers normally don't feel the transmission shift. Also, learning to drive in an automatic is much quicker quicker and easier. I have to admit, I learned how to drive in an automatic Chevrolet, but then I bought a standard Opal once I learned how to drive. In an automatic, you literally just need to learn the principles of driving on the road. But back in the old days, when manuals were more popular, not only did you have to learn how to drive on the road, but you had to learn how to operate the shift stick and clutch, which required more coordination skills. Another big advantage is that most of the new cars in America are automatic, and many car makers aren't even making manual options in some of their models. But now let's talk about the disadvantages. Cars with automatic transmissions can be more expensive than their manual equivalents because it's more complex than a manual and has many more moving parts. Of course, that depends on the car making model, but on average, an automatic car can cost $4,000 more. For the same reason, the cost to repair is generally higher. There are a few subjective disadvantages to the automatic. For example, they say it's less fun to drive since you have less control. Also, some argue that a manual transmission car requires the driver maintain focus and coordination more, whereas it's less so with an automatic. So what's wrong with that? Well, the downside is that it makes drivers more prone to multitask and engage in other activities in an automatic, which can lead to accidents. But again, these are probably subjective, but nevertheless, still food for thought. But now let's shift gears and talk about some common types of modern automatic transmission. The most common type of automatic transmission is the torque converter automatic. This works by using a hydraulic fluid coupling or torque converter connected to the ECU or electronic control unit to allow the transmission to control the car. Many people have heard about the continuously variable transmission, also known as CVT. A CVT doesn't use gears. Instead, it uses belts and pulleys, which create a range of gear ratios that constantly adapt to different driving conditions. CVT can be more fuel efficient, especially for stop and go city driving. CVT is also fairly simple and cheap to produce. Another type of transmission is the dual clutch transmission, or DCT. Essentially, it's two manual transmissions in one one gearbox controlled by a computer. It's called dual clutch because you have a clutch for the even numbered gears and another clutch for the odd numbered gears. During automatic operation, the computer engages the clutch for one gear set and disengages it from the other 
to perform the shifts. Since the inactive gear set is always ready to go, gear changes can be incredibly fast. And that's why you often find dual clutch transmissions in high performance vehicles such as Porsches. There's also the semi-automatic transmission or SACT. This system is sometimes called an automated manual or clutchless manual transmission. Basically, you can usually choose between fully automatic and manual modes, but unlike a manual car, you don't have a clutch. Instead, the driver uses a switch or paddle to change gears, and the car takes care of the clutch electronically. Formula One race cars use highly automated, semi-automated sequential gearboxes, which have paddle shifters. F1 regulations mandate eight forward gears and one reverse gear must be used with rear wheel drive. Fully automatic gearboxes have been illegal since 2004. Reason why is because they wanted to ensure that teams weren't using gearboxes, launch control, and traction control systems illegally to gain a competitive advantage. In other words, they wanted to ensure that individual driver control and skills were still at the forefront of these races. Basically, each driver must initiate gear shifts using paddles mounted behind the steering wheel. Then electro-hydraulic actuators and sensors do the actual shifting and throttle control. Most teams are using seamless shift transmission, which allows almost instantaneous changing of gears, with minimum loss of drive power. In fact, shift times for Formula One cars are around 0.05 seconds. But now back to everyday life. Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of misconceptions about driving an automatic transmission car. So here are actual do's and don'ts that really help you minimize wear and tear on your transmission and maximize your automatic transmission's life. First, don't coast in neutral when you're going downhill. There's a belief you can save fuel if you put your gearbox in neutral when you're going downhill. But that's not true. This actually cuts the oil supply so the transmission doesn't get the proper lubrication for smooth operation and can lead to wear. But also, driving in neutral minimizes your control over your car's speed and movement. So it's a safety issue too. You don't want to freewheel down a giant mountain. So if you have this habit, it's best to unlearn it if you're just sitting in the car for a very long time. Is it okay to leave the car and drive? Well, this causes overheating and can damage your transmission. So in this case, it's just better to shut the car off or at least leave it in park. A common mistake is shifting to park mode before the car is fully stopped. In other words, where your car is still rolling or crawling. If you do this, you risk breaking the locking pin. It's a similar thing you do when you shift from drive to reverse or vice versa. You risk wearing or stripping the gears when the car is moving, which leads to serious damage. So, before you change gears, just make sure the car is completely stopped. Yet another common mistake, keeping your fuel tank low. Did you know that an automatic car depends on fluid pressure to run properly? Fuel also helps keep your engine and other parts to stay cool and lubricated. So if you consistently keep your tank low on fuel, your car will wear out a lot faster than normal. I recommend you always keep your car tank more than a quarter full at minimum. And after it reaches the quarter line, just fill it up again. Pretend quarter is E. Is there harm in driving on a spare tire for an extended period of time? Spare tires are usually much smaller than the original standard factory tires. And driving on mismatched tires for a long time ruins the wheel alignment and also strains your transmission, especially if you have a four-wheel drive vehicle. Never do that. So yes, it does harm your car. So it's best to get your tire changed the sooner the better. Or, like I do, have an old car that has a full-size spare. Now, most people who drive manually already know to always use the emergency brake whenever they're parked, whether it's uphill or flat. But did you know that the emergency brake can also help save your automatic transmission? If you're parked uphill, downhill, or in a place where your car might be vulnerable to movement, you should always use the emergency brake even if you have an automatic transmission. Otherwise, you risk damaging the parking problem. Now, what if you get water into your automatic transmission? This can cause irreversible damage to the tranny because it can prevent your gears from shifting. If you have reason to believe you have water in a transmission, you should not drive your car. You should tow it to a mechanic and have it flush out immediately. Also, common mistakes is overloading your car, especially in hot temperatures. But heavy loads cause overheating and also can cause the transmission fluid to oxidize or burn, which in turn means premature wear and tear on your transmission. If you need to tow a heavy load, make sure your car is built for it by checking the max towing and payload capacity. Or else just use a tow truck or a vehicle that's specially designed for towing. 
Did you know that driving hard without warming up your engine is bad for your car? More people do this than you think, especially in the winter. Thing is, in the winter, cold weather causes oil to thicken and move slower. So it's best to start your car and let it run a bit while still parked to give the transmission fluid time to run into the transmission. Otherwise, if you shift into gear and drive at high speed, you can end up causing internal damage. And always check your vehicle owner's manual for specifics on your car. If you do need to add fluid, make sure you add the correct fluid. There are many different transmission fluids out these days. But now, you tell me, did you ever do or didn't do any of these things and later regretted it? Please comment below and share your funnier horror stories about your transmission. If you like this episode, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.